Thank you. Yeah, so like James said, um, I'm going to talk about some research we've been doing recently, um, looking at learning the sort of value of teamwork within pairs of players within a team and the individual's influence within positive passions of play. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, first of all, I'm going to take you a bit around a background about ourselves um, and the research that we do. Um, I'm then going to take you through a model of the teamwork that we've come up with. Uh, we're going to look at how we can form teams using this uh, model of teamwork, um, look at our results and then some discussion points that come up from this. So a little bit about us. Uh, like James said, I'm a PhD student at the University of Southampton. Uh, my research is focused on applications of AI in team sports. Uh, so far, I've written four papers uh, on football and American football. Uh, recently, I've just had um, a survey paper, uh, which is focused on all the applications of AI and team sports so far uh, published in the Knowledge Engineering Review Journal. So Gopal, my co-author on this, is my supervisor. So he's a professor of AI at the university. Um, he's also a Turing Fellow, and he's the director of the Center of Machine Intelligence at the university. Uh, he's had about 200 papers published in many domains in AI. Um, yeah, and he's uh, also been involved in the team that created a fantasy AI uh, algorithm, which was able to uh, factor into the top 1% of uh, human teams, um, and it was also featured on the BBC. Next year, we're running a workshop at one of the world-leading AI conferences, AAAI in New York, um, to sort of explore ideas with the AI community about how we can apply different AI techniques into sports. So um, we're part of the Agents and Interactions and Controls Group at the re um, Research Group at the University of Southampton. Um, they specialise in applications of AI in many domains, so there's people working on drones, emergency response, uh, swarms of robots, and many more. Uh, the sort of techniques that we specialise in are machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning, some game theory, um, and lots more as well. So in this study, we're looking to apply uh, techniques from multi-agent systems to the StatsMon data set and try to pull out some new interesting uh, metrics from this. So we decided to look at teamwork. Uh, we thought this is quite a subjective metric that's not really been looked at uh, in the numbers properly before. Um, so we wanted to see if we could use our AI techniques to pull out, to pull out the, uh, the new metrics. Uh, so to do this, we sort of looked at three different areas. We started off by uh, a building a network analysis around the data and going through patches of play and looking at how these patches of play uh, end. We then used some machine learning, some other calculations uh, to pull out how effective players are in these patches of play and sort of the key pairs of players in these passages. Finally, we use some optimization, um, and we go through and find the best players and pairs of players to form sort of teams from this. So we'll start off by going through our model. Uh, we take a number of steps to do this. So like I said, we look at analyzing the passing network and look at how um, passages of play and the events that they end in. So we can then look at how much players and pairs of players uh, influencing those passages of play. So we look at sort of goals and loss of possessions. We then need to learn how these events impact the overall team performance and how they impact the, yeah, the overall team performance and the outcome of the game as well in terms of a win or a loss. And then finally, we can use the weights that we learn to calculate the final player metrics. So we decided to look at pairs of players as well, uh, just because we think this gives a really nice way of pulling out the strong links within your side uh, and the weak links as well, so you can look at which players really combine well together on the pitch. So we start off, like I said, with some network analysis. So we iterate through all the patches of plays in the StatsBomb data set. Um, we work through and we break these down into different types of uh, ends. So we look at uh, patches of play that end in goals, shots on target, shots off target, and uh, loss of possession as well. So to do this, we've got a bit of an example here. So if we were building a network between sort of four players, so player one to four there, uh, we'd work through and sort of go through the passes and build the interactions between these. So from player one to player two, two to three, three to four, and then there'd be some of them. We can then add weightings to these directed interactions between the players. Uh, so like so. And then we move on to the next passage of play and sort of iterate through this, updating the weights as we go. Um, all the same passage of play that lead to the same event outcome. So we'd update the weights and then we'd have another passage of play to the event, and then we'd update as we go along. So we do this for all of the passage of play uh, within a game and for every team, and we build up the sort of squad and how they influence these type of events. So using our networks, we then start to extract the teamwork values. Um, so we do this for individuals and pairs, like I said. 
So for the individuals, we use the centrality within these networks that we've pulled out. So for each event, we're looking at how central that player is to that type of outcome. So we do this using the equation that's shown there. This is looking at the value of player AI, so VAI given the event EK. So this could be, like we said, a goal or a loss of possession. And then we go through and we sum all of the adjacent edges to the player as a node in the network. Um, so that just um, the weights there are summarizing the incoming and outgoing edges from that player. We then look at the player pairs. Um, so for the player pairs, we use the frequency of how often that pair of player is um, appearing in the different event outcomes that we discuss. So we get a value um, for each pair given the event um, goal, but in this case, just EK. So the final values are then calculated using a weighted sum of all of the values that we calculate for the different event outcomes. So to do this, we then need to learn our weightings and then be able to produce this weighted sum. So to learn the outcome um, weights, we use a logistic regression formula. So we train this using a feature set of the metrics that we learn uh, for all of the players. Um, and then we're looking at what the likelihood is that player, given their metrics, was involved in uh, a win, a loss, or a draw. So that would be our, um, our target variable Y. So we then feed in all of the data from the, state, the data sets that we have, and then we can start to learn the coefficient weighting. So uh, this is the alpha, the alpha values shown there um, that correspond to the events. So alpha 1 would correspond to event 1, alpha K to event K. So once we've got these weights, we can then, like I said, perform the weighted sum um, by going through all of the players and the pairs of players, looking at their value for that event, and then timesing that value by the weight that we've learned from our logistic regression formula, and then having the values for all the players. So a bit of a sort of a bit of background before we go into the player results that we got from the data that we looked at. Um, we just broke down and looked at the sort of average amount of players and the average length of the passage of play that lead to positive outcomes from the last couple of seasons. Um, so we broke down the big, the big six teams in the Premier League from the last two years. Uh, and we can see that Man City, as you probably expect, dominate these metrics. Uh, they have nearly, 12, uh, nearly 11 players involved in um, players um, in passage of play that, sorry, nearly 11 passes that lead to a, a goal. You can also see Arsenal do quite well there as well. Um, so we sort of expect to see these players from these teams dominating our metrics, um, which to us suggests that maybe these metrics are best used to compare players from the same teams rather than comparing across the whole league. Um, it just gives a nice way to be able to see how, um, sorry, see which players and pairs of players are affecting the team. So we look at the 17-18 top five players first. Uh, so you can see Man City players, as we expected, uh, very high up in this with Silva, De Bruyne and Fernandinho, the top three. What's interesting here is Xhaka. Uh, he gets quite a lot of criticism in the media, um, but it shows that he's key to Arsenal's tactical setup. And over the last, well, over the 2017-18 season, uh, he played a big part in the positive passage of play that they, that they were involved in. Uh, I think this has been spotted by Emery recently. He's made him captain, so I guess he sees him as a sort of key part of their tactical setup as well. So looking at the results for last season, again, Man City dominated. Um, I guess we sort of expect this. Looking further down the list, I think Pogba was seventh and I think Hazard at ninth. Um, but like I said, it may be best to pull out which players are most influencing your own team rather than across the whole league. Um, but we can see here Fernandinho being the key player for City. Um, I guess this might have been expected as well as the press last year around when Fernandinho got injured around Christmas time and Man City's performance dropped. I think it was 74% win percentage down to 64% while, uh, while he was injured. So it shows how key he is to their tactical setup. And also with Laporte as well, um, this season uh, he's been injured for what the last three or four weeks and Man City have also struggled a bit as well. So now we look at the key pairs from the same seasons. Um, as you can see from the 17-18 season, again, Arsenal and Man City players are dominant here, um, showing the sort of key pairs that influenced their sides. Um, yeah, Fernandinho, again, key to Man City with David Silva, and then Xhaka coming up again there. I think it's also Xhaka on the bottom there, but it's disappeared. So we decided to look at these pairs of results, like I said, just because it gives a nice way to be able to value teamwork and value teamwork between these pair of players. Um, it's, we foresee it as a good metric to be able to pull out which pairs are going to influence the game most, and then you can sort of 
pick out if Fernandini is injured, work out how this is going to affect the performance of certain players like uh, David Silva or De Bruyne. Um, if they're really reliant on Fernandinho, you can sort of calculate the sort of metrics they'd have with his replacement. So for the 18-19 season, again, Man City players there. Um, I think that's Fernandinho and Walker there. So you can see some key defensive partnership, partnerships for City, uh, as well as Sterling and Aguero as well. It's also interesting that Robertson and Mane are rated highly in the pair metric, but they didn't come as high in the individual metrics. I think this shows how key their partnership was to Liverpool this year, uh, which isn't shown as often in the media. Um, but for us, that was their key partnership in terms of passion of play. And between them, they had, I think, 22 goals and 11 assists last season. Also looking a bit further down here, uh, a 10th place was Callum Wilson and Ryan Fraser, um, who last season combined for a number of goals and uh, yeah, were rated highly on our metrics, showing that even though Bournemouth don't play the sort of style that's rated highly using our metrics, they've still managed to break into sort of the top players um, where the rest were sort of dominated by the top six. So yeah, that was the uh, sort of team metrics, uh, the player metrics side. Um, but to build on this, we wanted to work out how we can best form teams that maximises the, uh, uh, the pair values that we showed and then maximises the teamwork between the players. Um, we weren't trying to create an AI manager or anything like this uh, or try and take over the world with that, but we were trying to just give uh, an idea of how we can use our metrics to sort of form sets of players that work well together. Um, so a bit of an introduction to this. We use um, a combinatorial optimization sort of approach to this where we're looking to pick the 11 players from a squad of 25 in the Premier League. Um, and to do this, we're using mixed integer programming, which I'll go into a bit more detail over the next few slides. We sort of found this as a uh, complex computational challenge. So with the squad, um, there's actually 4.5 million possible combinations that you can select a team in. Um, so it just shows how, for a computer, that's a lot of, a lot of yeah, iterations to go through and check. Um, but we're really happy that we managed to develop an algorithm to uh, calculate the optimal team using the teamwork metrics in 1.39 seconds. Uh, like I said, this could be used for sort of a lineup suggestion tool, or it can even be used for opposition lineup prediction. Um, which we'll go on to talk a bit more about in the next few slides. So we start by uh, looking at maximising the individual uh, metrics that we showed in the previous slides. So here uh, we formed, like I said, a mixed integer program, uh, which is looking to have the objective function shown in the top right-hand side of the screen, which is maximising the value of all of the selected players. So the V of PI is just the value that we showed on the, on the previous slides. Um, and we also want to meet the constraints of uh, a standard football team. So obviously, 11 players. Um, and then we want to be in within a standard formation as well. So to do this, we use the constraints that I showed below. Um, so the goalkeeper, defence, and midfield metrics are binary variables that um, correspond to whether or not a player can play in that position or not. Um, also then, what makes this a mixed integer program is using the binary decision variable X. Uh, so X is representing whether or not a player within the squad is selected. Um, and I is the total number of players within the squad. So although this runs really quickly, it actually runs quicker than what we showed in the previous slide, uh, we didn't really think it, uh, it didn't do what we wanted to do. It only considered maximising the players' individual values. Uh, it didn't consider the other selected players within the team. So we wanted to build on this and use our pairs' values to uh, come up with a better solution to this. So for this, we uh, yeah, developed this teamwork mixed integer programme. So we brought in another value. Uh, this is shown at the bottom of the slide here. So what this is doing is going through uh, selected pairs within the team, and it's looking at how them pairs overlap with other selected players. And then if the pair does overlap with other selected players, it will add together their values from uh, the original metrics that we showed. And then we can use this as a weighted, um, a weighted sort of addition to our objective function in the top right-hand corner there. So what this is saying is we're looking to now to maximise the value of selected pairs while also maximising the uh, influence with the other selected players within the team. So what this is saying is, yeah, just looking at the overlapping pairs and adding where they overlap. So for this, uh, we have to change the binary decision variables around a little bit. So X now represents whether or not a pair is selected, um, which meant that we needed to have another binary decision variable to represent the players who were selected so we could still meet the constraints of the problem. Um, so Z is now the player, um, the player binary decision variable, and then that still allows us to meet our constraints within the team. So just a quick example of what we 
see this to be able to do. So this is just an example of eight players here. Um, the darker red lines represent strong links between players. Uh, the dashed red line represents weaker links between the players. So what our algorithm allows us to do is maximize the players who are selected with strong links between them. So even though player one might not have a, a strong relationship with player six, we know that there's a sort of route round the side that they'll be able to work well with other players who are selected. So it allows us to sort of get rid of the weak links within the side and pick a 11 players um, who all have strong links between them. So we tested this uh, by going back through the last few uh, seasons of data um, and we formed teams using our methods uh, for every team in every game and we compared them to the actual manager selection um, and then calculated the average difference for each season using each method. Uh, the results are shown there. Um, so we can see um, that it didn't perform quite as well as we were expected for the Premier League seasons, but we think it's because we haven't considered injuries. So when we're doing our back testing, uh, we've just formed what we saw as the best team based on the metric at that time in the season. Uh, we didn't consider whether or not that player was injured. Uh, we just didn't have the time to be able to go back and find all that data. Um, but what we did do is then look at the World Cup instead, just because it's a smaller data set, um, less injuries, less squad rotation because of fixture congestion and stuff like there is in the Premier League. Um, and we saw much better results for the World Cup. Um, and you can see that our pairs method performs better across all of the, uh, the seasons that we tested. So we also did some further testing um, just to sort of test our metrics a little bit more. So from the 17-18 Premier League season, uh, we went through and looked at all the starting lineups for all the teams and summed together their selected team from the 38 games that they appeared in and their values for that. And then we plotted that on the x-axis and then the y-axis is the number of goals that were scored by a team um, in, in that season. So you can see Man City far away on the right-hand side there. I think they scored 95 goals was it that season. Yeah. Um, and that was the season they got 100 points. Um, and then you can see the other big five Premier League sides um, in the middle of there and the rest of the Premier League sort of bunched towards the bottom, sort of showing how there's a positive correlation between our teamwork values and the number of goals scored by a team. So building on this, we thought we could use our values to predict certain metrics of starting lineups within a game. Um, so we went through and we started to predict, use our values from the pairs and the individuals for the lineups to predict how many shots and goals and would be scored and conceded for the game and how many passes they'd have. So we found that using our pairs method, um, we're able to have a 14% accuracy increase on shots, 13% uh, on uh, goals for, seven on goals against, and then a 46% increase on passes. So the root mean squared error table over there is showing how close we could get to the number of... Uh, yeah, the number of shots and the number of passes that were made in the game. And we're quite happy with being within sort of 50 passes based on the starting lineup. Um, being able to predict this could give coaches and managers a bit more insight about how a certain lineup might perform. We also used it for just predicting the match outcome just to see how this correlates. Um, so we used, uh, yeah, like I said, our pairs algorithm, and we found that we had 62% accuracy when using this to predict the match outcome, which compares quite similarly to Dixon and Coles. It's yeah, about what we expected it to be. So just some final slides to, uh, to conclude and finish up. Uh, we wanted to sort of think about the real-world applications for this. Um, it's not just some crazy metric that we've come up with. Um, so we, straight, we sort of thought it's the player rating system to start with. It can be used by coaches and managers to uh, identify the strong links between players and their team and the weaker links as well. Um, it could also be used by the media to sort of find which players are being most influential to a team and the way they're set up. Like I said, it could also be used for a team recommendation system, not as an AI manager, but just as a way to sort of make sure that you're picking teams with strong, um, picking players with strong links between them. Uh, we also have done a bit of testing recently um, that when we've been identifying weaker links in the team, um, how we could use these metrics in scouting to be able to find players who may improve the team, and we've seen some really good early, uh, early results on this. Like we said, we could use it for our opposition lineup prediction, so being able to see what sort of lineup the team might be able to do based on the trends from the previous games. And then finally, based on the lineup that we're predicting, we can predict the metrics that that team might have and then produce tactical setups around this. So just a few discussion points. Um, so firstly, we've shown how we can identify uh, the pairs of players that have the strong link within the team. Um, which, yeah, like we said, we can see being a really, a really key tool and metric. We've also shown how we can form teams similar to a manager. Uh, so we think this shows how managers are considering these sort of things in the team. 
Um, it also shows that probably the team that they're picking week in, week out is able to build a stronger teamwork metric between them, um, which is something we also consider there being a bit of a bias between uh, four players who are selected often. Uh, so we thought if a team wanted to really adopt this, they could start to record events in training and look at which players are involved in training game, passage of play, and start to yeah, look deeper into what links they've got within their team. Uh, also, we think in further work, we can start to think about opposition teams and strategies based on um, what the opposition is likely to play and use some game theory in this, uh, this side of the, of the work. So in summary, we've shown how we calculate our new metrics um, and how we can learn the weights um, of how certain events impact the game. Um, and then we've shown the top players using our metrics. We've shown how we can form optimal teams using our teamwork metrics and then using our MIP optimization. And we've shown how we compare this to managed selections and how we can use um, these values to predict certain in-game metrics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.